Today we have an exciting one, because this is a leak strategy of a private e-commerce mastermind that I attended last year in May in Los Angeles, and it was a geek out. Now, if you know anything about e-commerce, you've probably heard of the geek outs. They were these events packed with crazy value, super high carat speakers, and unfortunately they don't do them anymore, but I just want to take a moment to share this one strategy because I thought this might be interesting for some brands, and if you have the right product, this could work really well for you and it could help you scale your brand in 2024. Now, this was originally shared by Molly Pittman. And if you don't know Molly Pittman, she is behind Smart Marketer and the partner of Ezra Firestone. There's probably no other person in e-commerce that has shaped the space like Ezra Firestone. He's just one of the legends with Boom by Cindy Joseph, with the Smart Marketer products. It is just insane. And Molly Pittman is the partner of, of Ezra Firestone. And she also leads a big part of Smart Marketer and also they have an agency where they take care of a bunch of clients. And she shared the strategy and I just found it to be so interesting that I also want to share it with you. And I've previously, previously shared it with my German audience, but now I think in 2024 you need to have diverse strategies to make your brand work. And if you have the right product, then this could work really well for you. Now I would say we dive right in because we will do a quick video, I will give you the overview, and then you can assess if this makes sense or not for you. It is very easy to test, and if it works well, then you might be onto a gold mine. So let's just take a look. Now what are we going to do? Essentially, we are combining ecom with info, and then we try to scale. Now what does this mean? Obviously in e-commerce you're mostly selling physical products. But then there's also a completely different world to that, and the opposite is info products. It's basically information that's sold. And that can be ebooks, it can be courses, it's, it's like your favorite online gurus and all of these guys. And yeah, it's just like you can sell information too, and it's valuable. And you can do the same thing in ecom, but often it's not pretty obvious, and that's why not a lot of people do it, or they just don't think about it. Now, there are two ways you can really use it. And the first strategy we walk through right here and the second strategy is just in a nutshell and we might delve into that in a future video you can essentially combine your physical product with an info product add-on let's just say you sell like a golf club or anything and then what you give away for free is a golf course like a one hour two hour three hour seven hour lesson on golfing or anything like that it's something that is valuable to the customer and you can just give that as a free add-on and just add a price tag to it and this can make your offer more powerful. Now this is one strategy that's really interesting in offer creation and it works really well to make the perceived value of your products even higher. But today we take a look at a different strategy and here we essentially build a small info product, we give it away for free to collect lead data and then we try to convert them on the back end. And this can work really well if you have a product that gives out value in the beginning that people can feel, they can experience, and they get a value out of it. And if you have something like this, then keep watching because I will break this down for you right now, and then you can still assess if it makes sense, but I would definitely test it because sometimes you'd be surprised how well this could work. So let's just start off with the first step. And in the beginning, the first thing you need to do is you actually need to spot info product potential. Now, most of, what does this mean? Basically, everyone sells his physical products, but there's often a counterpart that could be info product. Like every physical product could have an add-on, which is information that you give away for free. And this doesn't have to be only information, like you can give away an ebook that elaborates on that matter. But you can also give away a small sample, for example, for free. It can also be an additional software. So everything that gives like value to the customer, you can give it away for free and you use it as like a front end offer to lure people into your brand. And it could look something like this. So here she talked about, Molly Pittman talked about this brand that basically sells like a book or I don't know, a calendar or anything like that. And it's like a guy you write in there. It's like a journal, something like this. And what they gave away was free printables every Friday. So people sign up and people got instant value by, uh, from it because it's essentially the book, the journal, just in a small way and just very, very limited. But people could try it out and they got value out of it. So what they did is then coming in the, in the, in the coming steps. Now, the second thing is, as soon as you found this info product potential, you need to set up some email flows because the funnel will look like this. You give away something for free with Facebook ads, like you advertise a free offer. And then people leave their email address to you so you can send them emails and then they will be nurtured with this email flow and then they will hopefully buy. 
And this is essentially the funnel. So you have like an ad that advertises something that is for free. They leave their email, they get emails, and then they hopefully buy the bigger product. So you have like a super cheap acquisition cost on the front end. And an additional acquisition funnel to just diversify your acquisition funnels because this is what it's all about in 2024. Now, we spotted the info product potential. We've come up with something that we want to give away for free that we get contact data, so lead data uh, in return. Now, the second step is to set up email flows. And here, you need to stretch it over like multiple weeks. It needs to be nurturing. Now, the structure can look something like this. First, you send them a welcome email and how to use. So you get the maximum value out of the product, out of the freebie that you give them. Now then, the emotional found story behind that can give some authenticity and also just to connect with them. The third step is then a transformational story and some tips. Fourth step can be product intro, so you introduce your big offer, the one you actually want to sell them. Then a life-changing story with that offer again, so like with maybe even a special offer, then a last chance email. And you set the delays, you just write out these emails, set out the delays in your Klaviyo or, or Sandlane or wh whatever you're using, and then you just let it rip, you just let it sit there. And then as soon as leads come in, they will get this automatic email flow and they will just be nurtured, 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 and hopefully buy the product. And what do these ads look like? So they are converting on the front end. You need to be getting a good cost per lead in order for it to make sense, because you will have a certain amount of leads, people registering to get the product and then obviously you can calculate like how many people end up buying the bigger offer and this is these are like the kpis you need to have in mind in order for, to make the funnel work but now let's talk about how to create these banger creatives that actually get people to sign up for the product it's really about having these strong creatives and with lead ads i found image ads to work the best most of the time it's also very easy like the, it's like the 80 20 rule if you want to test this funnel i would test it very simple, easy, with a, well, with a great structure that works and converts. And now what I would recommend for the creatives is that you just do an image creative of the product, show it nicely, maybe with a UGC image or something like that. You see it right here. And then you want to have this checklist. First of all, you want to call out the persona who's interested in that. Then you can also include a pain point in that. And then you just have like an offer CTA. And then if you have this, then you can just put it together in an image and this is one they ran, this is more focused on the pain point. So an ad doesn't have to include everything, but in the copy and in the image, all of these three points should be included. So it makes the most sense for the customer, for the potential customer to sign up for it. Now this is one ad they ran and it looks something like this. Tired of constant negativity from your child, here the like, persona call out in a very, very subtle way, ages like 11 plus. So this directly talks to parents with children that are older than 11 years. And also we have the pain point in the middle. And then with the ad company that's accompanying it, you also have the offer there in there. So it's for free. And this is essentially what they ran on the front end to get this lead data in. Now, what do you do with that? And how do you make it work in the media buying and also the KPIs? You would need to run, or like you could you could run any campaign, but what I would recommend to you is that you run one CBO campaign, which is a campaign budget optimization campaign. They usually tend to do better and are a bit cheaper. Then, because it's like leads, in e-commerce we mostly run broad ads, but sometimes we like to throw in some interests or lookalikes. And here it's more so that you have this one campaign, then you have like three to five ad sets, and they all include the same ads. But the difference is the ad sets, they will have different interests or lookalikes. Now, if you have like three to five image ads for each ad set, that's perfect. You just duplicate it, you switch out the interest in them, and then you have like one campaign with three or five ad sets with three to five image ads, and all of these ad sets have different audiences. Now, you just let it run, and I would recommend you leave that running for like 14 days to really see it optimized, to get lead people people in, get lead data into the funnel, and then I would watch out that you have a cost per lead of like below a dollar fifty. But this really depends on your on your price and your offer that you sell afterwards, like the big upsell that you actually want to sell. Now then what you do is that you just keep them running for like 14 days, you get some lead data in, and then I would make a cut or you already see people converting and then you can analyze okay how much did I spend, how many leads did I get, and how many of them actually converted to the higher offer that I want to sell. Is it super profitable? Is it barely profitable? Is it super unprofitable? And then I would go from there. If it's like super unprofitable, maybe it's not the right strategy for you. But if it's like barely profitable, 
or it just needs to be a tight and more profitable, then I would recommend you optimize the funnel because this is just like one structure and this structure works really well, but it could be that your brand maybe needs some different emails right here or that you need some different creators right here to bring your cost per lead down. And once you figure that out and you know like how many people usually convert, like if I get, let's say I get 30 leads and then one of them converts, I know what my cost per acquisition is, right? It's like 45 bucks because 30 times 1.5 to get one purchase. Now, it could be cheaper, it could be more expensive, but essentially you need to make the numbers work and you need to optimize the funnel so it converts on all fronts and works really well. And this means for the ad, it needs to have a low cost per lead. And then also your funnel needs to have a high conversion rate. And if you combine all things and optimize them and view it holistically and you know your numbers, then this could be a very, very interesting funnel for you because you not only get like different people coming in your door, but they also might be cheaper than just running regular conversion campaigns. This can be a great addition to your growth. And that's basically it. So I want to share this strategy with you because I found it to be pretty cool. And if you have the right product, the right brand, this could be a great acquisition funnel for your brand. Like this could really help you sometimes also weather the storms when your conversion campaigns don't convert or you just want to diversify a bit. You want to get more people in and this could really just help you scale. So I want to share this with you. Uh, please try it out if you have the right brand for it. And then also report back how it worked for you because for some it works insanely well, for others it doesn't. You just need to figure it out. But luckily these lead ads, they are not expensive. Like you can spend a few hundred dollars and you know how this thing works, if it makes sense for your brand or not, but you might be onto a gold mine. So I hope this was insightful. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them down below in the comments. And apart from that, I'll catch you in another video and see you soon.